What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, reviewing today Evolve. This is a new asymmetrical shooter by the guys over at Turtle Rock Studios, the guys who brought us Left 4 Dead. In this game we are playing as bounty hunters, drawn out to the edge of the universe, to a planet called Sheer, to try and deal with the ultimate monster outbreak. In Evolve you have a choice, to play as either the monster or as the hunters. If you choose to play as the Hunter, you have one of four distinctly different classes. You have the Medic, whose job it is to keep everybody alive and kicking, and to do anything it can to deter the damage you're going to be taking. You have the Support class, who has all the real tricks up his sleeve. Invisibility, ranged shielding, anything he can do to keep the tactics rolling. The Assault class, who does most of the heavy damage to the monster, while also trying to keep it distracted and absorb the most damage. The Assault can take the most hits, so you really want him up front at all times. And the Trapper, possibly the most important role of all. The Trapper is able to track the movements of the monster, and when he's able to catch up to him, create a humongous football field sized ball around him to trap a whole chunk of the environment so you can try and finish the monster off. Each Within each class, though, there's multiple characters that all have their own special moves. For instance, one of my favorites is Val the Medic. Val makes it where she can chip away at the monster's armor and even slow him down dramatically with tranquilizer darts. Each of the classes and each of the characters are so diversely different and very brutal, but they have to be to fight this incredibly difficult threat. When playing as the monster, you have three different monster classes you can be. You can be the Goliath, the slow heavy tank, who has the most health and armor but the least ranged abilities. The Kraken, more of the long-ranged monster. This guy is able to shoot lightning from a distance and drop bio-organic landmines around the map. His tactic is keep them away and I stay healthy. And the Wraith, this is the sneaking monster. His abilities are all about confusion and burst damage, being able to confuse them with a decoy here and get a swift strike there, but he does have the weakest and lowest health. The core concept of the game is that the hunters have to find and track down the monster as fast as possible, where you, playing the monster, have to stay hidden and consume all the wildlife you possibly can to gain levels. As the monster creeps around the map and consumes this wildlife, he gains new abilities and strengthens his abilities where necessary, making it where he can travel faster, have more armor, have more health, and just genuinely hurt more. The hunters have to find the monster as quick as possible, because if the monster reaches level 3, he's nearly unstoppable, and now has an extra objective. A level 3 monster is able to destroy a checkpoint on the map called the Power Relay. If the monster is able to destroy this, it's an immediate win for the monster. It's the ultimate game of cat and mouse, where the hunters are trying to find him as swift as possible because if he gets to max level, then the game is on. Facing a fully powered up monster is one of the greatest threats in the game, and it's such a thrill to actually go down, to throw down against a level 3 monster. To have him trapped, have him slowed, have them tethered in every way possible, and still see him chewing through your team. Mine. It was coming down to the very end. We are all trying to lock down around the power relay. We know a Goliath is coming and we know he's level 3, but we knew, we knew that we were ready. We had landmines set up, I was ready, everybody was ready, and when he showed up, we were not ready. He decimated us. I was the medic and he was smart to down me first. Watching him pummel on my team as I laid on the ground was devastating to me. To know I could do nothing to help them was such a fascinating terror. This game's class balance is absolute perfection in my opinion. Each of the characters has such fantastic strengths and weaknesses, and each of the monsters have their own perfectly coy strengths and weaknesses. Not to sound too cheesy, but it reminded me so much of sword fighting. Whenever you're trying to strike, you're also leaving yourself open. But the more you do it, the more you realize the nuance of it, the tactics of it, to level up your characters as much as possible and unlock what you're best with. In hunt mode, the only time I ever really found myself getting annoyed by the experience is whenever you ran into people who were really, really unskilled. Unfortunately in this game, since teamwork is the very backbone of it, if you ever have a teammate who doesn't know their class well, you're gonna suffer because of it. 
And on the other side of the coin, if you end up facing off against a monster who doesn't know his class very well, you can actually wrap a game up in less than five minutes. Outside the default hunt mode, you actually have a couple side modes that are pretty fun. They usually require you to capture certain objectives, save certain survivors, or destroy eggs of monsters. My favorite of the other game modes is called Defense. In this, you're trying to defend an airship that's being refueled from the monster that's attacking over and over and over again. Something about that giant timer in the corner, watching it tick down, really made it feel like such a visceral fear, especially when you don't know which monster you're fighting that map. Is it going to be a long range? Is it going to be a wraith? Are you just going to be dealing with the goliath coming up and pummeling your ship? You don't know until he storms out trying to kill you. The primary mode of this game, though, is evacuation. Consider this the campaign mode of the game. In it, you're playing through five days of combat. Each day is constituted by doing another game. The first day is always a hunt. The second, third, and fourth days, though, are randomized between the other game modes, hunting, rescue, or nest. And the fifth day is always defense mode. Playing through this 5 day mode is probably definitely where this game shines the absolute most. To actually see the mechanics play out in all the different environments, to play on all the different maps, really makes it show where it all balances out. An interesting mechanic that only exists in this campaign mode is the fact that whenever you win or lose a match, it affects the following match. For example, say you're trying to defend a gigantic power generator on one map. If you succeed, then you may get an additional turret on your base in the next map. Or if you fail and the monster destroys it, then the next game, you'll actually have nuclear waste strewn about the battlefield from him tearing open this delicate reactor. Overall, the game modes are interesting, the classes are well balanced, and the monsters look really good and play really, really well. The idea of basically having a first-person shooter versus a third-person action game combined together is so fascinating, and the small flaws we run into this game I am very forgiving of, because I'm very happy that Turtle Rock Studios is deciding to be a trailblazer in multiplayer gaming. Let's head on over to the ratings board and put a big number on this. I am giving Evolve an 8.5 out of 10. This game is rock Solid, and I highly recommend you play it if you have any sort of friends that play games online or you just really appreciate the nuance of an online shooter. If this game represents the future of online gaming that we're going to be seeing in this next generation of game consoles, I am on board 120%. Thanks so much for watching guys, this has been Dreamcast Guy. Feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe, but as always, keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, maybe check out my last video. Please subscribe, and if you want, share this somewhere with your friends.